track temp is 26. The air temp is 27 Celsius. Here we go. Don't fuck this up. Yeah, let's not mess this up indeed. Hello guys, Lasse here and welcome to Le Van Quatre du Mans, or better known to you and me as the 24 Hours of Le Mans. I, uh, this is a race I uh, recorded uh, a while ago in R Factor 1 as you can see. I'm using the uh, Virtual LM uh, track mod, it's a 90s circuit La Sarthe, with the uh, Endurasis, uh, let's say we've got an entire field of LMP1s, GT1s and a bunch of GT2s. I'm currently driving in a Porsche 997 RSR, so I am in the GT2 class. And I think this is going to be uh, a very fun video to watch. It's 40 minutes long. I hope you can stay tuned till the end, because this was a lot of fun and a bit, a bit chaotic as well. So this race is uh, simulated, well, simulated 24 hours of Le Mans. I, about an hour and 12 minutes long with a full day-night cycle. So this is going to be a real, going to be a small test of endurance. There you go. Got now to the front. Now coming through Maison Blanche. Almost ready for the start. The GT is now have to catch up with the prototypes real quick. Safety car is pulling into the pit lane. Oh, bit. Maybe a bit of contact back there. And now. And the 24 hours of Le Mans is go, go, go. And already it's coming to a head. Peugeot gets rolled by one of the Audis. That's going to be a, cause a bit of a pile up, but all of the everyone can continue. The Bentleys and one of the Audis gets a great start now going into the Dunlop chicane. I think that's Emmanuel Piro in second. Look, maybe looking for a move. Yeah, it's still a long race, so anything can happen, and it usually does here around Le Mans. I can't win through Tete Rouge. Man. You've got to tell me, R Factor 1 in 2023 is still awesome. Just look at this. Now the start from our perspective. Trying not to hit anyone going through the chicanes. Now you can see the poster getting rolled. I have to go to the outside. Get a bit caught up, lose a bunch of positions. Didn't want any uh, want to overtake anyone just before the line because that would give me a stop go penalty. I didn't want to get that right at the start of the race. You can see a bit of contact from see from cars behind. Going into wasn't the best start of of my career, but it's not the worst either. And now, uh, Let's see what we can salvage from this mate. trying to avoid some of the mayhem. Going through the S's. I might actually feel the bit of aero damage already. Of course, it's, oh, he's already going for the move at the Rouge. That's very brave indeed. It all just get overtaken. Left, right, and center. Not feeling confident at all at the start. Here you can see one of the panels cars is now trying to go for a move. He's gonna stick it. No, he actually pulls out of it. Now we looking up for a move here into the first chicane. And now we'll just peel back. Oh and we get a bump right absolute Sector one is clear, we think. We're just getting literally off. shafted in this first lap already. It's a long race still, so no need to panic at all or something. Just 
falling right behind the panels. Break into the second game. Okay. We're gonna go for the move. Yep, we're gonna have a go. But he has the inside line covered and actually a bit of contact there. So that's even more aero damage. You've had a lot of aero damage there, mate. Body work looks pretty fucked. Yeah, we already know that, crew chief. So top speed is going to be a bit compromised, but we can still stay in the toe of the car head. You know, three white there going over the hill. Into Mozan corner. Taking it very easy. Already going, maybe going for a move. It's a lot like a go kart race, actually. Now the panels behind us is also looking for a move, but nah, he's gonna stay right there. Getting a nice slipstream. Maybe actually even going for a move here, going maybe into Indianapolis. Oh, onto the grass. Are we going to make a sick? No, he is. Uh, last late break is there. Almost getting overtaken by the panels behind us. But we can defend going into Arnage. And we got a poor exit, he's got the better run. Can we keep him behind him? Yeah, that's going to be fine. We're going into the Porsche curse for the first time. Got a bit of breathing room now. Oh, there's a bit of bodywork there. It's from the Peugeot, Nicola Minacion. Trying to overtake the Celine going into Porsche Curse. He's going for the move and oh, he just loses in his entire front end. So that's going to be a quick visit to the pits on the end of lap one. Porsche is having a horrendous start to this race. Yeah, guys, that is lap one of the. Le Mans 24 completed. We just hop over the curbs because track limits are oh, not really strict uh, around here. At least we never get penalized for track limits because, well, there's either grass or a gravel trap. Uh, oh, we're going here for move into Dunlop's game. Nice! Already at the back of one of the Porsches. A bit of a queue right in front of us, so we can just get right at the back. Oh, panel's going for a move in on the inside of the Tetris, but we've got the outside line and the better run, so we can actually defend a bit. And he is right next, right next to us. Side by side. This fucker's trying to distract you. Don't let him. Oh, it's hard not to get distracted from that. He oh he pretty much tried to drives into the wall there. Yeah, right, now breaking for the first again again. We can keep him behind. Also, get right up to the back of the Porsche in front. But we've got the aero damage, so and and they've got short of gear, so he is now getting the run. Not gonna need to tow. Actually, he is stuck behind another Porsche right in front of him, so now we can actually. Are we gonna go for the move? Yes, we are, but now nah, we're a bit too far behind to actually go for it, so we can just make that mistake. Oh my god, the run they get out of the. Chicanes is unreal. And that's what the short gears do, do for you. Almost losing the toe there. And then he goes on. Again, for the second time in this race. 
Oh, he's got the better run. No defense of the panels. Yeah, I think you can actually you can actually keep behind this time around. for a second time. And again, the exit speed of the cars in front of us. Oh! We're getting bunched up a bit. This could be an uh, overtaking opportunity. Yes, it is! A double overtake, in fact. Because two cars get a terrible run and we can just... We can just breeze past just like that. Now we find ourselves in P26. Already back up quite back up the order quite a bit. This is where the air damage is going, going to affect us for the rest of the race. The Porsche curves are way yeah. We can actually get on the back of the cars in front. One of so Ferrari in front is a bit slow. I think he's got damage as well. Is it going to be another double overtake? Yes. Two cars going into the Forza game. Very brave move that was. Oh, there was an incident behind us as well. You can see the overtake again. I think there was a farm backer. Oh, he gets pushed off. Oh, that's a spin. Oh, touches the back of one of the Ferraris. But he can continue. And there's a bit of Audi bodywork there. I wonder what happened there. Maybe you can actually get a clue of what happened there. No, we don't. I think that must have been Manual Hero or either one of the Audi R10s that had a spin there and lost bodywork. You know, the Porsche is going here. For a move in out of Tete Rouge. Inching right in front. So we have to tuck in behind. But we've got the run thanks to the longer gear ratios and lower wing settings. I can just breeze right past him. He's turning on the headlights now since it's getting dark. Want to be able to still have the ability to see uh, with what, it, what is in front of me. This is going to move the there. Don't be here. Uh, I'm not really intimidated by him at this point. I know I've got the better speed, so I can just keep him behind on the straights and then just make sure I get a good enough run out of the chicane. Oh, a bit, bit on the grass there, but nothing to worry about. Once I get up above a certain speed, we can just keep him back behind with these. Yep, pulling away a bit already. Yep. And now we can keep him behind. We have to fight for another day. Now going to Nash, he's trying to remove again, but I think he's gonna cook this one. Yep, he cooked, he overcooked it. Gets a terrible run, and that gives us the breathing space that we want. Now we can focus on the guy in front. And later on, we actually overtake him through the Porsche King. Just cutting as much as we can from the Dunlop chicane because, well, no track limits, so why not as well just get the best, well, just straight line the chicane as much as we can. There's Persia now coming, getting through. Oh, we can 
myself back in 823. So now we are about, I'd say, fifth in class. So already made up quite a bit of ground. Nothing really happened at this point. Now we're just trying to carve our way back to the front. So catch up again with the cars in front. There you go, we get a great run. But we are just about. Yeah, we're not going to try it. Oh, something. Something that we now get to see. Oh, this is McNeish going into Indianapolis. And oh no, he just gets. Oh, oh, and he spun. What was that? Yeah, let's see. Oh no, this is gonna go. Oh, it's all come undone for the Audis. That terrible luck continues. Such a shame. I think the D4's gone off. Sector 2 is clear. And here we go for the move. And we make sick. Yeah. Well. Now that's up to P22, going into the S's. Sun is setting ever so slightly. in front actually going three wide here can we make a stick into Mulsan? no he just tried to line up right back behind him actually we couldn't uh, get back behind them because Ferrari was, was a Ferrari there so we now get a place anyway so now it's up to P21 now going towards Indianapolis again you can see it's getting very dark already you can hardly see anything out in front actually i'm glad that the, there's a portion in front of me because that means i've got a slightly slightly more visibility I'm going into indianapolis which at this point has become a completely blind corner almost can we go from the yes we can back to the gears going to the Porsche curves and he's got a great run and he's got the toe let's is he gonna go for the move no, he's just too we are just far enough ahead he, you can see he is look two fries right right up my rear bumper going into the Porsche curves they've got the better run you can see it there look He's trying to look for a move, but he's not going to try it around the outside, is he? Yes, he is. He can actually make a stick. It turns to the outside for for Vetcorn, and we can actually stay side by side with him through Maison Blanche. This is going to go. Who's the last of the late breaks going into the chicane? And that's me. The curve. Absolutely attacking those last few curves. They're not even there. So I've, I've passed the other Porsche. Now we're up to P20.
And just like that, it is time for our first and only pit stop of the race. Due to our fuel consumption, we couldn't uh, drive the like, finish the race in one without stopping. So just going for the single stop strategy. Also used as an opportunity to repair some of the aero damage. Exit. We should come out into position 35 in front of Turner. Well, we're going to get a great, a great and safe exit out of the pits. We're that was a four, not changing tyres because, four, well, zero, seven. I can just... Even, even though I'm using the soft tyres, uh, they're so good, I can just as well double stint on these tyres uh, if I wanted to. Unfortunately, the race is not that much, so I actually ended up being double stint. But, see, that's going. And just like that, we are back on the. at the rear bumper of the. other oh, cars. Okay, okay. Nice exit through there, and. Oh, Porsche spun in front. B33, going into the Dunlop chicane, defense from our inside, now trying to make a move but cannot keep him, cannot make it stick, going into the air, out of the Dunlop chicane, We're going into the S's, have to stay behind him there, he gets a great run through there, now we're going to have to get a great run through the Roos and then have a go at the straight. And he gets a great run there as well. Now it's just settling down for a bit. And try to make the move somewhere else on the track if we can get uh, close to him. Breaking just in between the 200 and 100 meter board. Make up all the ground through the entry of the chicane. And we are right at the back of him. This could be a overtake into the second chicane. I can, I can feel there's one coming up. We're inching closer and closer already. Sixth gear, 270 kilometers per hour. Here we go, we've got such an overspeed on him. And already passed just just before the braking zone. Job done. Now it's off to the other guys out in front. Who are about a minute ahead or so. Not coming through an action. Oh my word, look at the back! Audi rolls there. See what happened. That's Bila in the Audi R8. He's trying to pass the panels. Oh, he just takes too much curb. And just, oh, and, oh, hang on, what? Okay, that was even too much for the game to handle what was going on there. But he somehow got no damage from that, and now he's back on his way. So, uh, that was a bit weird. But yeah, that was the... How was that? I'm just going to shut up for a bit and let you enjoy a hot lap of the Circuit de la Sarthe. Alright, that was a 
Sector 3 is clear. The truck temps increasing. It's now 26 Celsius. The gap to Baumbacher behind is increasing. It's now 2.2 seconds. to go 20 minutes. Air temps rising. It's now 21 Celsius. As you can see, some of the guys are now already starting to come into the pits. So it looks like uh, doing a bit of an undercut has actually worked out terrifically. There we go. We see more people coming into the pits. Now overtaking one of the Ferraris. And that is now, I think we're now P2 in class, if I'm not mistaken. The leader is right up, yeah, he's right there. That's the leader of the GT2 class. So we've gone from essentially the back of the grid all the way back up to the front. That's also why they say in endurance racing that it's never over until it's completely over. Got a great run gun coming out of the Porsche curves. He's, I think he's going into pit. Yep, he's pitting. And that is now our car in the lead of the race. Well, of our class at least. Well, yeah. I think that was well, pretty much... Uh, the race, if I'm not mistaken. You can see the tire wire here. The rears are halfway worn. Six minutes remaining. Yeah, we think Piro has crashed. 
again. Oh man, Hero is having so much bad luck in this race. Towards the chicane. Just bring it home to the end of the race. I think this is now currently the final lap of the race. I think it is. I'm going to the. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 this is the second to last lap. Pretty much nothing. Here we go, into the final lap. Having. Also, I have to note, I haven't made a single mistake going into this race. Just none. I just drove perfectly. Having said that... Ah, don't worry about it. As, a, as an endurance racing specialist, I have to make sure that the gravel traps actually work for the other drivers. That was just me testing them. That was just me testing them. There was nothing... Nothing to be seen there. It was completely on purpose. Anyway, going through Tetris for one final time. Getting passed by an Audi R10. My god, that car is fast. Now it's just waiting until the leader, one of the Bentleys, crosses the line. And after that, the 20 hours of Le Mans in R Factor 1 is done. Now. Also, making sure I do not make a single mistake going through these final fuel corners. Because it can be taken away from me pretty much at the snap of the fingers. Very easy to make the fine, yeah. The last mistake, the last minute mistake. Here you go, coming through the Michelin chicane for the final time. No issues whatsoever. Yeah, that second stint. Apart from that, Small mistake going into uh, the Dunlop chicane uh, in the final lap. It's pretty much flawless. That's how. That's pretty much how you want to drive an endurance race. This car sounds amazing. Pretty much any Porsche GT car sounds amazing. You can trust me on that one. You just look up videos of, well, onboard videos of any Porsche RSR, say that being the 996, 997, or even the more recent uh, GT cars from Porsche. They're, they just all sound amazing, especially the gearbox wine. Going through the Porsche curves for one final time. I had a lot of fun going into this. And it just also shows how much fun it still it still is to drive R Factor One in 2023. Even though I am about 10 years late to the party, uh, I'm really enjoying myself playing this game. I really am. With all, also trying to install the mods from what are now essentially very dodgy websites with no, with, uh, no well. anyway here we go through the final corner and across the line in P1 of our class as I was saying most of the 
uh, website from them that uh, have download links for the mods uh, are not as safe anymore as they used to be. So that's a bit tricky, but yeah, wait. but I'm having a lot of fun nonetheless, and also safely. Anyway, now pulling over into the pit lane just in front of the safety car. Hello, how you doing? Yeah. And on that note, it is time to end the video, uh, I'll say. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, I think you can... Uh... No. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. And uh, can't wait to see you for the next one. I'm having a lot of fun uh, making videos lately. So I'm going to... Maybe even start a little series with uh, this game. Imagine seeing a brand new R Factor series in 2023. Who would have thought? Anyway, the final cars are now coming across the line. And that's it for me. Take care. Have a nice day wherever you live in the world. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Cheers.